James chapter 5, 16 and 17. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Healing here is not only healing of physical infirmity. Healing of the soul, healing of the spirit, healing of the body, healing of relationships, healing of your finances, healing in every facet of life that ye may be healed. And I believe this morning somebody that will connect the word by faith and receive healing. Whatever that healing, whatever area of healing you are trusting God as he sent forth his word, but he sent forth his word and healed them and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. And the word of God is sent this morning because God will be sending his word to somebody. And I pray that you will mix it with faith. You will receive your portion of that word and then receive the healing in the area that you are trusting God for healing. I believe somebody here is trusting God for healing. Hallelujah. And that healing will we, we get to you. You will receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it by faith in the name of Jesus. That ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much accomplishes much produces much result hallelujah is so potent the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much availeth much amen first john chapter 5 14 to 15 first john chapter 5 14 to 15 And if we know that he hear verse, let me read from 14. Okay, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Amen. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us. Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. And my prayer this morning is that we know, truly know. It's established fact that he hears us. But what needs to be established is that you know that and you believe. If you don't know it, it will not work for you. It is what you know that works for you. People say that what we don't know don't, will not kill us. It's not true. It's what we don't know that kills us. Hosea says, he said, he said, for, for lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. Ignorance is a killer disease. It is what we know. You see, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The truth you do not know may not free you it is the truth you know that will free you that is why it's expedient that we study that we read we meditate on the word of god we study to learn the more we learn the more we know the more we are free the more we are healed the more we are blessed and if ye know and i pray this morning somebody will know that it's not just head knowledge that you're talking about it's experiential knowledge if you know it, you know it to the point that you believe in it and you act on it. You know it to the point that it gives you peace. You know it to the point that you enter rest. It's knowledge that leads us into rest. Because knowledge builds faith. And that faith brings rest. And if you know that he hears us, if you know that God hears you when you pray, we pray more if we truly know that he hears us. One of the things that hinders prayer is lack of that assurance and that confidence. Of all the ones I prayed, has he heard me, has he answered and all that. If you think and believe that God does not answer prayer, God does not hear your prayer, it will weaken your prayer life. It will discourage you from praying. But if you know that you, and you know for sure, and have that conviction, that assurance, inner conviction that God hears and answers prayers. 
then you don't you don't need anybody to beg you to pray you don't need another motivation to pray you don't need problem to pray you will not wait for satan to stir up crisis to pray you will value prayer you will prioritize prayer you will commit to prayer and you will pray and pray and pray you will enjoy praying you will love prayer and my prayer this morning is that God will bring you to a point where prayer becomes delightsome. Where you begin to enjoy prayer. Where you will love praying. You will not wait for prayer meeting. You will not wait for people to call for prayer conference. You will enjoy praying and you stay in the place of prayer. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Confidence is an inner assurance. Confidence is conviction. Confidence is trust. Confidence is faith. Confidence is strong belief. Unshakable belief. And this is the confidence that we have in him. And what's that confidence? That if we ask anything. Can you say anything? I don't think it makes sense to you. Anything. I doubt if you understand the implication of that. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. He hears us. Because God is committed to his will. God is covenanted to his will. God will do his will. And that is why I say, when you pray, say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. God's will is done in heaven. And God will always insist that his will be done in heaven. And that was why when Lucifer wanted to thwart the will of God, when Lucifer wanted to abort the will of God, and influence his will to be done heaven did not keep quiet the forces of heaven were governized to to ensure that the will of god was done and so lucifer was driven out of heaven god didn't even need to come down or to fight because that would be an insult and j michael took up took up the sword and then drove lucifer down from heaven not minding that lucifer by hierarchy was higher than him but because lucifer has gone against the will of god michael now had the power to outwit him to drive him from heaven and lucifer fell from heaven amen and he came to earth here to ensure that the will of god is not done to stamp his will and become the god of this world and deceive men and deny people of the will of god and rob them and deceive them to to begin to do some other thing so satan tried to ensure that the will of god was not done what was the will of god you of the trees of the, the garden of eden the fruit you may freely eat but this one which is the knowledge of the good and bad don't eat of it and because Satan does not want the will of God to be done, he deceived man, he deceived Adam and Eve to eat to disobey God. To flout God's will and do their own will. And man was deceived, and man fell out of the will of God. And God did not take that for granted, he didn't take it lightly. Man was cursed, man was driven out of the garden of Eden. Man was driven out of the presence of God. Man was driven out of the garden where there is blessing and everything. The land flowing with milk and honey. That will tell you how much God values his will. That will tell you that God wants his will to be done. And that's why when you pray, say, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. God wants his will done in our lives. God wants his will done in our families. 
God wants his will done in our society. God wants his will done in the world, done on earth here. And I pray this morning that anything that contradicts the will of God, anything contrary to the will of God in your life, be uprooted in the name of Jesus. And I pray this morning, starting from this morning, that the will of God will be done in your life. So God is committed to answering prayers that is done in his will. So what we activate the efficacy of prayer. One. He said the effectual fervent prayer. It must be effective. Praise the name of the Lord. You must pray effectively. And to pray the effective prayer, it must be in compliance with the word of God. Because he said, if you ask anything according to his will, prayer made outside the will of God is dead before it started. It's dead on arrival. Don't expect answer to prayer if you pray outside God's will. So if you want your prayer to be answered, the first thing you must ensure is that you are praying according to the will of God. And one of the ways to pray according to the will of God is that your prayer should comply with the word of God. You must pray according to his word. The word of God is the will of God. The word of God spells out the will of God. And so you must know the will of God. You can't effectively pray in the will of God if you don't know the will of God. That's why I say, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that cannot be put to shame, rightly dividing the word of the truth, word of truth. That's why I say to Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you will make your way prosperous by praying in the will of God, and then you will have good success. That's why I say Colossians 3 16, let the word of God dwell richly in you in all wisdom. So you must know the will of God. And you must pray according to the will of God. And to know the will of God, you must study the word of God. You must understand what God says concerning your life and concerning every situation and every circumstance in your life. You must understand and know what the word of God, word of God says concerning that issue you want to pray about. For you to pray effectively, you must understand what God say about your prayer point. To say the Lord is very important and very powerful. It is written, it is very important and very powerful. Jesus was able to acquit the devil, was able to, to overcome him when he was tempted by saying, by understanding what is written, knowing what is written, and speaking what is written. Satan came the first time, Jesus said, It is written. God, your mind cannot handle your future. Your mind cannot handle the devil. Your mind cannot solve your problem. It is God's mind and God's will. Let me speak my mind. Don't speak your mind. Speak God's mind. Jesus did not speak. He spoke the mind of God, the word of God. It is written. Satan came again. Jesus said, it is written. And now Satan understands that the only way to get Jesus was to go to what is written. And I started quoting the scripture and twisting it. Jesus said again, it is written. Comparing scriptures with scriptures. And then Satan was knocked out. Praise the Lord. So you must pray according to the will of God. If you ask anything, it is conditional. He said, this is the confidence we have in him. That we ask anything according to his will. So if you are praying outside the will of God, you are wasting your time and you are wasting your energy. That was why when Jesus prayed, if it's possible, let this call pass over me. What did he say? He said, nevertheless, not my will. Because he knows that it is the will of God that will be done. He knows that God is committed and covenanted to doing his will. He didn't want to waste his time. He didn't want to waste his effort. He wanted to see results. When we pray, let's be result oriented. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't just pray to fulfill righteousness. Don't just pray as a church sacrament, as a religious exercise. 
If you don't need to get result, don't waste your energy. Each time you go to God in prayer, go with the attitude and mindset and resolve to produce result in your prayer. Go with the mindset that this prayer will give you testimony. That this prayer I want to pray, I don't want, I'm not just going to waste my time. I'm not just going to pray so that I to satisfy myself that I prayed. To satisfy myself that I played my part. I am going to do business with God. I'm going to transact with God to change things. Prayer is a spiritual transaction. I'm going to transact with God. I need this to change. I need God to involve, to, to, to work in this area of my life. This is the result I want to produce. You must have result in mind. Hallelujah. You must have the effect of prayer you, you want in, in your heart, in your mind as you are going to prayer, to pray, to the place of prayer. And you must resolve in your heart that you are not going coming back empty-handed. Amen. Because God's word cannot return to him void. It will accomplish the purpose for which it is sent. So when you are going to play, place of prayer, into the place of prayer, go with the mind that that prayer will accomplish the result, the purpose for praying. Amen. It will accomplish that purpose. So you must pray according to his word. Your prayer must comply with the word of God. The written word and then the rema word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because you could be studying the word of When you study, you get understanding. This is the principle. This is the will of God. God is committed to this. This is what God has for me and what God wants me to do in this situation. And as you are praying also, the word of God will literally lift from the scripture to your heart to speak to that situation. God speaks to address issues. So it's not only under, understanding, literally, literally understanding what God says and the principles and the way God works. That is very important. You can, as you are praying, struggling also, you get a word from God concerning that situation. Which is the Rema word, the now word, that deals with that issue. When that word comes, it could be an answer to the prayer. It could be an encouragement. It could be a boosting of your faith. Hallelujah. It could be an understanding. It could be a building up of your life. When Jesus said to the apostles in Luke chapter 5, from verse 1, cast the net after they have toiled all night and they have no result. Jesus wanted to produce result. He wanted them to go with result. And he said to them, cast the net in the, to the right side and then you will have great harvest. Peter said, we have toiled all night and we have nothing to show for it, no single fish. Nevertheless, at your word, because God's word will produce God's result. Nevertheless, even though humanly speaking, there is no reason to try again. We have exhausted every possible means of fishing or producing result here. But we can't throw away your word. We have to act in accordance, in obedience to your word. Nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down the net. And when he did that, the word of God he acted upon produced the result. Amen. So, prayer must be made for it to be effective. Because the prayer that is potent, the prayer that produces result, is the prayer that is made according to the will of God. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will. Amen. If you are asking for blessing according to the will of God, he hears you. If you are asking for healing and you pray according to the will of God, he will hear you. If you are asking for transformation according to the will of God, he will hear you. If you are asking for promotion, like our daughter and our sister asked, and you pray according to the will of God, you must know the will of God. If you don't know the will of God, I don't know whether God wants me to get the job. I don't know whether God wants me to prosper. I don't know whether God wants to heal me. So you must know what God wants. So you can pray with confidence. Praise the Lord. Let me, let me ask. If um, maybe Professor A.K. Maybe he had plenty of money. And he didn't ask you to come for money, for help. He didn't promise you he's going to give you money. If you are going to him, 
you will not go with strong, strong confidence. Am I communicating? But if he invites you, he says, come, I want to help you. I want to give you some money. You know that that is his will. He's willing to do that. So when you are going to meet him, you will go with confidence that you'll come back with something. Is it not so? Because it is according, you know his will. His, his will is clear. He has made it known. And I tell you, God has made his will known. Hallelujah. Written in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is the will of God. The will of God for our life. His will is clear. His will is evident. His will is made manifest in our life. His will concerning our healing. He said, by the stripe of Jesus, 1 Peter 2, 24, we are healed. Hallelujah. He himself took our sicknesses and infirmity and the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And by his stripe, we are healed. So if you are going to God for healing of the body, you have a scripture. You, have, you know the will of God in that direction. But I don't know whether it is the will of God to heal me or not. Or whether he wants me to learn lesson by this sickness. Or whether he's punishing me for my sin by this sickness. If you are going to pray like that, you will not pray with confidence. I don't know whether God don't want me to be rich, so I will not deny him. If maybe probably if I get money and become prosperous, I will not be I will not live, I will not love God again and all that. If you pray with that mindset, you will not pray with confidence. Hallelujah. But if you have understanding that He's the one that gives you power to make wealth, praise the name of the Lord. If you have understanding that Jesus became poor, that you through poverty might be rich. Amen. Then when you are going to God in prayer, you pray according to his word. You have the confidence. You say this. You remind him of what he said. You bring strong reasons. Can you say strong reasons? Hallelujah. Reminding God, your word say this. Your word say that none shall be barren in the land. Amen. When you be created or say be fruitful and multiply. Amen. When you say, you say, Affli affliction will not arise again the second time. Because in the first time, you were afflicted with my affliction. And so it will not arise the second time. I will not suffer what you suffered for me. Then you have a scriptural ba basis for your prayer. And so when you are going to God, you remind him of his word. Hallelujah. When you are going to God, you go with the scripture. You go with the word of God, the written word of God. Because that you see it in the word of God does not actually mean you will have it. It's not a guarantee that you have it then. Amen. So you need the you know, guidance of the Holy Spirit to know if you actually want this. If you actually need this. If this is what God wants for you as a person. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So it is a combination of the word of written word and the Rema word. Hallelujah. Not everything you see in scripture uh, it will happen to you now. There are wars that may happen tomorrow. There are wars that may happen next year. Praise the name of the Lord. The Holy Spirit will help you to know whether this is appointed time for this. Or whether this is what you need for now. Hallelujah. And that's why we must acknowledge him. That's why we must pray in the, in the spirit. Pray in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you will know what God wants for you at a particular time. You maybe you want to travel, you want to travel. God is not against your traveling, but he may not want you to travel now. And where you want to go may not be where he wants you to go. God wants you to marry. You may pray and pray and pray. And God, uh, uh, this, uh, this young man so serves you. It's not every holy young man and every committed young man and every passionate young man that is your husband. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So you need the Holy Spirit to guide you to know which is your own and what is the appointed time. And how to go about it. So it must be in compliance with the word of God. It must be directed and guided and empowered by the Holy Spirit. And I thank God. Romans chapter 6 verse 8 verse 26. You see, you see, likewise the Holy Spirit helped our infirmities. Infirmities are weaknesses. Infirmities are limitations. Can you say limitation? We have limitation. God is the only one that is limitless. We have human limitations. But when we pray in the Holy Spirit, He helps our limitations. He helps our weaknesses. He empowers us. 
Amen. And then we pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray in tongue. You pray in the Spirit. He that prayeth in tongue edifieth himself. You are building up yourself. Do 20. And ye belong. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. When you pray in the Holy Spirit, He knows everything. There's no limitation in the Holy Spirit. But there's limitation in us. There's limitation in our mind. But when we connect the Holy Spirit, we go beyond. He breaks walls or limitation. He helps our infirmities. He helps our weaknesses in prayer. Weaknesses in knowing what God wants at a time. What God wants us to do. And weaknesses in even praying it. Because he's the one who is at work in us. Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So it must be in line with the word of God in alignment with the word of God and in alignment with the guidance of the Holy Spirit you must work in partnership with the Holy Spirit he is our partner he is our helper amen he is our helper he helps us to pray he helps us to act he helps us to receive he helps us to act in the will of God that is the Holy Spirit praise the Lord hallelujah so two things number three for prayer, I'm still talking of effective prayer. Because the effective prayer that avails much. Apart from being word compliant and word blazed, based, alignment with the will of God and spirit empowered and guided and directed. Amen. It must be prayer of faith. Can I say prayer of faith? James 1, 5 to 8. Say, let him ask in faith. For prayer to be effective and produce result. And be potent, it must be prayer of faith. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit some, because it is not missed by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to transact with God. For he that cometh to God, maybe in prayer, must believe that he is. And I say, rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So your faith must be in place. For prayer to be fetra. Are we together? You must pray according to the will of God, guided by the word of God and the Holy Spirit. Two, you must be a prayer of faith. Can you say prayer of faith? You must pray with confidence. You must pray believing. If you don't believe, don't pray. Don't pray until you believe. Except you are praying to in the spirit to quicken your faith to believe. Amen. If you must doubt prayer, settle the doubt before you pray. Because prayer, prayer they don't believe is a waste of time, waste of energy, waste of kingdom resources. So settle the doubt. Settle in your mind that God will hear you and answer you. Then it becomes meaningful to pray and reasonable to pray. It must be prayer of faith. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. And the prayer of faith will save the lost. It must be prayer of faith. Because a double-minded man is unstable you know, it's way. If you have faith, as small as mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Mark 11, 23, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And if you pray and you have no doubt, you will have whatever you pray for. So, ineffective prayer is prayer of doubt and unbelief. But for prayer to be effective, it must be prayed in faith. It's not enough to pray, you must pray in faith. Don't pray religiously. Don't pray to say you are prayed. Don't pray to fulfill all righteousness. Pray in faith, believing God and expecting result. I pray that the next time you pray, you will go with confidence. You will pray with expectation. You will raise your hope high and expectation high and your faith high. Trusting God that you will not go back without result. You will not go back without answer to your prayer. Amen. So it must be prayer of faith. Three or four. Amen. Oh, that's number three. It must, okay, number four. It must be. It must pray. It must be born of righteousness. The faith prayer of a righteous man, <laughs> not a sinner. Sin barricades our access. He denies us access. Sin denies us access. Access to God, access to God's intervention, access to God's blessings. He said, my hand is not so short that it will not reach you. God wants to reach us, but something shortens his hand. 
I am not blind, I will not see you. I am not dead, I will not hear you. But something caused barrier. Your sin has separated. And if you are separated from your helper, you become helpless. So we need connection. Can you say connection? Righteousness is connection. Unrighteousness is disconnection. You can't be charging your handset and you are not connected to the source of power. It does not charge by osmosis. Praise the name of the Lord. You must connect. Can you say connect? Can you say connect? You must connect. The fact that you are near to God does not mean you will be blessed by God. You have to connect Him. Amen. Can you say connection? Prayer is involving God. Prayer is connecting from God. And you cannot collect until you connect. So, what connects us is righteousness. Can you say righteousness? The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man. But you must understand what it means by righteous man. That does not mean you go with your goodness and your personal work. Amen. Righteousness is not street observance of rules. That's not righteousness. That's not the righteousness you're talking about. It's not talking of street observance of rules. But the righteous is not lawless either. Do you understand me? The righteousness you're talking about is conscience void of offense, free from offense, free from guilt. And that righteousness is based one on your justification. Amen. That gives you a conscience that is free from guilt. You can't be praying to God with guilt and expect that that prayer will produce result. Prayer made out of guilt will not produce result. It won't cross the ceiling. Prayer made out of sense of unworthiness will not produce result. You are going to God. I don't think I'm worthy. I don't think I've got God with me. I don't think I'm, a, I'm good. I don't think God will hear me. I don't think I, because I committed. That's why the accuser of the brethren destroys our faith and access. You want to pray? He says, look at you. You told a lie yesterday. Look at you. You didn't do this yesterday. Look at you. You have not prayed enough. You didn't fast. You didn't pray. You didn't do that. And that's what he's trying to do. He wants to kill our confidence. He wants to give us, create guilt. Because if you succeed in creating guilt, then you create a sense of unworthiness and deny us access. The evil one run and when no one pursues him, but the righteous shall be as bold as lion. Praise the Lord. So you need a heart rid of guilt, free from guilt. And that is based on our justification. Can I say justification? Therefore, being glorified freely by God, by grace, we have confidence. We have access. Amen. We have access. Let us come boldly to the throne room of grace that we might receive help. So guilt robs us of boldness. It robs us of access, robs us of confidence. But righteousness gives us boldness. Righteousness guarantees our access. Righteousness builds our confidence. And what is that righteousness? It is based not on your good work, but on the good work of Christ. It's righteousness based not on your performance, but the performance of Christ. You can't perform enough to gain access. You can't perform enough to end your answer to, answer to your prayer. But Jesus has performed more than enough. He said it is finished. So when you are going to God, you are not going based on your volume of performance. You are going based on the record of Christ's performance. Amen. So that is one side. You must have confidence in your justification. You must have confidence and believe that your sins are forgiven. You must have confidence and you may go with the consciousness that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That righteousness has been imputed into you. What is right, right, righteousness? Right standing. So I'm going to have right standing with the person I'm going to ask for help. If you are coming to ask me for help and you don't have right standing with me, do you think you'll be bold? Amen. If you hurt me and maybe stole from me or hurt me or insulted me and you suddenly remember that I'm the only person that will give you help. When you are coming for that help, will you be bold? Your heart will be beating like somebody playing drum here. Amen. Because you are not sure. 
Praise the Lord. But if I'm your friend and yes, you have right standing with me. Amen. You have right standing with me. You have been working in obedience and all that and in love. And you are coming. You will come with boldness. For as he is, so are we. You see, there's no fear in love. Perfect love casts away fear. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Who has made us so? Him. He took our rag of sin and clothed us with the garment of righteousness. So when you are going to God, you are not going on the volume of your performance, of your good works. You are going based on the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I have right. Can you say, I have right standing with God? I have right standing with God. Jesus has justified me. He has cleansed me. He has washed me. He has justified me. He has given me, imputed his righteousness in me. So when I'm going, I'm not going with guilt. I'm not going with guilt. No, I'm going with confidence. I'm going with, with in righteousness. Knowing that I'm accepted in his beloved. Knowing that he loves me. Knowing that as he is, so am I on, in the, on this earth. So that's one aspect of righteousness. And that aspect of righteousness is conscious effort. To work out what Christ has worked in you. Which is obedience. Can I say obedience? So don't try to assure yourself when you are working in disobedience. There, 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 there are two dimensions of righteousness. Titus 2, 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying unrighteousness and worldly loss, we should live godly, soberly in this present world. Two dimensions of grace. So don't go with the grace. Grace covers me. And you can live anyhow. You disobey God. You flout his word and his will and instruction. And you go your way. And you say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Sin has no place in me. I'm the righteous. No, 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 no. That is unrighteousness. Because the righteousness that is inside that cannot manifest in outside, outside is, is in doubt. Are we together? So don't wash yourself with grace and grace and grace. And say grace. The, there are two dimensions of grace. Grace that, that, that washes you, that justifies you. And grace that empowers you to live right. Grace that delivers you from the, from the, from the penalty of sin. And grace that empowers you and, and helps you to overcome the power of sin. So they are the great that they have taught to deny ungodliness and worldly loss. Amen. That is what we call redeeming grace. Can I say redeeming grace? Title 2, 11 and 12. Two dimensions of grace. Redeeming grace. Which is the grace that justifies us. Grace that, that removed it penalty. And give us righteousness. That is redeeming grace. But there's enabling grace. Can I say enabling grace? So grace does not only teach us to deny unrighteousness, it equal teaches us and able to lead godly, righteously in this present world. That's enabling grace. Hallelujah. And that's the grace it talks about in Romans 6 14. For sin shall not have dominion over me because I'm not under the law, but under grace. Grace is not lawlessness, grace is. Is empowerment to meet the standard of the law. That's grace. Empowerment to meet the standard. First of all, you are justified. You are cleansed from your guilt and all that. And then you are empowered to live right. So when we are talking, effective prayer of a righteous one. The righteous one is the one that is free from guilt, that is justified. And then is walking in obedience and empower, trusting the Holy Spirit. To, uh, to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit. To overcome the power of sin and to live right. To practice the righteousness that is imputed and manifest it outside. Is, is, is somebody here with me? So it must be the prayer if I've been of a righteous man. Can you say I'm the righteous man he's talking about? Righteous not because I performed enough. Righteous not because of my good work. Righteous because the righteousness of Christ has been imputed in me. I've been justified and I've received grace to live right. I've received grace to practice and to obey the word of God. I've received grace to walk with the partner with the Holy Spirit. And as the word of God and Holy Spirit enables me, I live right. And it's not a, a set of rules that I'm trying to practice. No. It's an inner empowering to meet the standard of the rules, rules of God and the commandments of God by the help of the Holy Spirit. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. An empowering to live right. An empowering to say no when you are tempted to sin. 
and empower him to say yes when they are tempted to do right to do good things you are empowered to do it you are empowered to say yes so they are the grace that teaches us to say no to sin and grace that enables us to say yes to goodness yes to righteousness yes to the word of god yes to the holy spirit yes to the will of god that's empowering grace why redeeming grace makes us to say no when we are tempted to sin enabling grace helps us to say yes to the word of god to the promptings of the holy spirit amen to the to the instructions of god to walking in obedience i pray that these two dimensions of grace these two dimensions of grace will be made manifest in your life on daily basis in the name of jesus so it must be effective which means compliant to the word of god based on the word of god guided and empowered by the holy spirit it must be prayer of faith it must be born of righteousness the redeeming grace and the enabling grace conscience free from from guilt free from sin and you are coming with boldness because the righteousness of christ is imputed in you number five it must be fervent amen the faithful fervent prayer <laughs> for prayer to be potent it must be fervent can I say fervent he didn't just say if Israel carefree prayer, if Israel reluctant. No, 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 no. If Israel a sluggish prayer, no. Sluggy prayer will not produce result. It must be fervent. Can you say fervent? Can you see the attributes of prayer that is effective? Amen. Attributes of effective prayer. Number five, it must be fervent. Can you say fervent? fervent means intense can you say intense you there be intensity intense earnest tenacious fervent heartfelt not live service not religious utterances heartfelt driven by burden and passion hallelujah not the one you are praying your hands and your pocket you are praying you are looking at those people who are you are that's not praying you are playing you are praying you are you are you are what's happening you are doing your touching your handset you are praying you are taking time you are taking your time you are praying your mind is not there eh eh or twinching god spirit serving the lord romans chapter 12 verse 11 be not, not slothful in business. The slothful prayer does not produce result. Not sloth. Romans 8, uh, 12, 11. Not slothful in business. Not slothful in transacting in prayer. But fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. That the kind of... It took fervency for, the, for, for Jesus to sweat blood. Are you hearing me? The pores open. Are you hearing me? The nails open. Open. And then it's not only only sweat, blood said they coming out because of the intensity. I'm not, I'm not drunk. I was at the deer pan for water and the water broke. So my heart pan for you. Early will I seek you. My spirit seeks you. My soul long for you. My flesh thirsts for you. The totality of your being is involved in fervent prayer. It's not in service. The spirit is involved. The heart is involved. The soul is involved. Your hands are involved. Your everything about you. Do other things you want to do. And pray when you mean to pray. Not you are praying. You are absent-minded. That's not fervent. And that does not... When we are talking about the potency of prayer or efficacy of prayer, that's not the prayer we are talking about. It must be fervent. Can you say fervent? The faithful fervent prayer... Elijah was a man of light passion and he prayed and he prayed fervently and he prayed again and then he saw a result. Amen. Hallelujah. As we try to try it up. So he said it avails much. Can I say avails much? Avails much. Produces so much result. It must be passionate. It must be intense. It must be heartfelt. Hallelujah. Amen. Then finally, what, what does it produce? What kind of result? 
We talk about the efficacy of prayer. The prayer of a righteous man works tremendously on him, works tremendously for him, works tremendously through him. So the efficacy of prayer is in these three dimensions. In me, it changes me. You can't pray without being changed. When you pray, arrogance dies, self dies, flesh dies, the flesh is crucified. Your mind changes. Amen. You, you cultivate God. What, how does it work on you? It stays off your spirit. It stays off the Christ life. It stays off the presence of God. It stays off the anointing of God. It stays off the power of God. It stays off your spirit. It beats you up. And ye belong to 20. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. In our prayer in tongues, edifying in self. That is what prayer does. It works on you. It stays off the, 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 the light is supernatural. It stays off the life of Christ. It stays off the presence of God. It stays off the power of God. It stays off the influence of the Holy Spirit. It stays off favor in your life. It stays off righteousness. It stays off your faith. It stays off your commitment. It stays off hunger for God. It stays off your victory. It stays off the gift of the Holy Spirit. It stays off the deposit of God in your life. It stays off your potential. And it creates an environment, an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to work in your life. It creates an environment of favor. It creates an environment of encounter. It creates an environment of God's intervention in your life. It connects you to the will of God. It aligns you with the mind of God and the thoughts of God and the ways of God. It imparts burden and hunger for God. It imparts love for God. Prayer works on us. And I prefer that aspect of prayer. Amen. Over 70% of our prayer should be the one to pray to work on you. Because when you change, things will change. Hallelujah. You are the first person that will change. Are you hearing me? Sometimes we need everyone around us and everything around us to change, but we are not ready to change. But God will first change you. When Peter prayed, he changed. He said, not, nevertheless, not according to, by your word, I will let down. When Jesus prayed, prayer changes. He said, not my will, but your will be done. So prayer will first work on us. And I pray for today, you will commit to the prayer, to prayer working on you. It will work wonders. It will produce the love for God. It will produce passion. It will produce zeal. It will produce uh, uh, fervency. It will produce righteousness. It will produce fresh hunger for the world. Fresh hunger for God's presence. It will carry the presence of God. It will produce the glory of God in your life. It will produce favor. It will produce uh, connection with God. Intimacy with God. Prayer produces intimacy with God. The more you pray, the stronger your intimacy with God. The more you pray, the stronger your passion for God. The more you pray, the more you connect the heartbeat of God. God's concern will become your concern. God's heartbeat will become your heartbeat. God's desire will become your desire. God's life will become your life. You will stay up the gifts of God. You will stay up the grace of God. You will stay up the presence of God. You will stay up the, the, the glory of God in your life. And as you are working for the place of prayer, if you are truly prayed, you will be smelling God. You will be carrying God wherever you go. Full of faith, full of power, full of... Hallelujah! That's why it says in Philippians 4, 6 to 8, Be careful for nothing, but in everything through prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving. It kills anxiety. It kills fear. It kills doubt. It kills unbelief. It kills worry. It kills despair. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be not made known unto God. And chapter verse 8, and the peace of God. Prayer works on us. And the peace of God that passes understanding. And the peace of God and the joy of the Holy Spirit beyond understanding will flood your heart. Prayer brings healing. Emotional healing, spiritual healing, every kind of healing. It heals you of fear, heals you of love, heals you of anxiety, heals you of despair, and build faith and hope. When you pray, hope comes alive, faith comes alive, joy comes alive, peace comes alive. Because the life of Christ is activated through prayer. Stay up your spirit. Then secondly, because of time, prayer will work for you. Hallelujah. Prayer will work for you by breaking yokes, by clearing the ground, by destroying the works of the devil, by creating an even environment and for God to walk and destroying the environment that is healthy for Satan to walk in your life. Satan chases out the devil and chasing God. Hallelujah. Prayer creates an every environment for favor, for peace, for joy, for all kinds of blessing and amazing testimonies. And I pray this week, prayer will work for you. It 
will work for you. It will cut off the hands of the devil. It will cut off affliction. It will cut off mis- the, 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 every kind of evil. It will cut off the hand of the devil and be connected to the mighty hand of God. And that mighty hand of God will bring testimony. We bring breakthrough. We bring open doors. We bring deliverance. We bring freedom. In the name of Jesus, I pray for somebody here as you step out. Activate the prayer line. Prayer to work for you. It will work in your marriage. It will work in your health. It will work in your career. It will work in your mind. It will work in your in your finances. It will work in your personal life. It will work in your in your in the environment. It will create a new environment. Environment of favor and opportunity. You will walk into the valley of great opportunity. You will win. We want to favor you. God will want to favor you. Everybody will want to favor you. It will connect you to destiny helper. It will connect you to everyone you need in carrying out your life assignment. I pray in the name of Jesus that from today you will see the mighty workings of prayer for you. It will not only work in you, it will work for you. When prayer work for you, you have testimony. When prayer work for you, you have transformation. And you have life and joy and peace. Then finally, prayer will work for you through you. Hallelujah. I said prayer will work through you. As you intercede for people. As you supplicate for your nation. For those in authority. The power of God will pass through you. On pro- to work for others. To be never men and calm down. Say to them, there's a lifting up. And as you are doing that, your prayer is working through you. Through you to reach others. Through you to create a noble environment. Through you to break you. Through you to open communities. Through you to bless families. Through you to touch many lives. Through you to solve the hard hands. Through you to bring the house, the story house of people. Through you, to to bring salvation and to connect people to God. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will experience the potency and the efficacy of prayer. Prayer will work on you. Prayer will work for you. Prayer will work through you. You will be a blessing. When prayer start working through you, you will be a blessing to others. When men are cast down, you will say to them, there's a lifting up. Can you jump on your feet and shout, prayer is so powerful. Prayer is so powerful. It will work for me. It will work for me. It will work through me. Palate. Can somebody begin to pray? What does it do? It transforms. It empowers. It activates. And yet, go to pray the Kaba. If you believe in the potency of prayer, let me see those that believe in the power of prayer. Let me know that nothing knows that believe in the efficacy of prayer. If you believe, express it. Express it. Now can we pray? It's in the confidence that we have in him, that we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. God hears us. God has our prayer. God is committed to bringing his will to pass. That's so why you pray. Say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And pray for today. You will see the wonder of your power of prayer in your life, in your family, in your marriage, in your career, in your society, in your community, in our nation. Prayer is working for Nigeria. Prayer is working for my family. Prayer is working for me. And it's working in me. And it will walk through me. May hands on the sick and they will recover. If they can get the ones sick amongst you, let them come and get out of the church. Anointing them with oil. And the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Ah, pray for those in authority. In that seat for them. That prayer and supplication be made for all men. When you are making prayer, that supplication for all men. That is prayer working through you to affect all men. To influence all men. To heal all men. To deliver all men. To save all men, for God is more willing that they should perish. And prayer walks with you, through you. And prayer walks through you. Those who are meant to perish will not perish again. People will see deliverance. People will enjoy salvation. People will enjoy the power of God. The power of God will pass through you to heal, to deliver, to save, to bless, to impart. Aye, Kalabada. For the next, for the next 15 minutes, I would like us to pray. Take a chance day of the advantage of prayer. Take a chance day of the advantage of prayer to advance your cause, to change your life, to change your situation, to change that issue.
za to se ko pokutu rato so pokutu this is the this is my pain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and if you have no doubt in your heart you will have whatsoever you say rato so ko pokutu now hear me is there anything in your life that need to change is there anything around you in your marriage in your family in your body in your workplace in your finances that you are want to believe God that that thing will change is there anybody around you you want to pray for and you want to trust God that through you your life will create a deliverance and salvation and break and open door for them prayer will work in you on you prayer will work for you prayer will work to you when prayer start working to you you become an agent you become a, a channel of blessing to people a channel of deliverance a channel of salvation i pray in the name of jesus that from today you will see the efficacy of prayer you will see the working wonders of prayer in your life it work wonders it works wonders in us i knew how my life was how are you to be how are you to behave and act how my character attitude where until prayer be, i stay in the place of prayer hey it destroy loss it destroy it destroy fear it destroy doubt it destroy anxiety it destroy worry it builds faith it builds confidence it builds the christ life ah, we can stay on the christ life and build up ourselves by praying the holy ghost he that prayed in tongues and defied himself pray in the spirit is not only praying in tongues you can pray in, in spirit you can pray in tongues but not pray in the spirit you can pray in english and pray in the spirit Pray in the spirit is donating the holy spirit in your prayer whether it's in Ibo or in Nausa or Yoruba or Efi or, 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 or whatever or, or whatever or French or in Latin whatever it means you connect the holy spirit you are praying with the holy spirit involved setting up your prayer life hey life by the holy spirit helps our limitation help our infirmity as you connect the holy spirit your limitations are broken limitations are broken and you enter the realm of limitless limitless zone you know the mind of god and the will of god and the timing of god and the what god is about doing you are you are aware and conscious of the move of the god, god in your life and you connect it that is so cool. we are still praying for the next 10 minutes i like you to pray if you believe if you have this confidence that whatever you have is father in the name of jesus he will do it for you now pray now pray now pray take advantage of this complex prayer when we pray we create an atmosphere an atmosphere of god an atmosphere of power an atmosphere of anointing an atmosphere of healing an atmosphere of grace an atmosphere of god's presence and god's power an atmosphere of the miraculous take advantage of advantage of prayer pray 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 like you believe pray like you expect pray like prayer is potent so poco to go back to the day in our rain for three and a half years and there was no rain he prayed again in the name of jesus and that prayer produced results i pray for him today you begin to see commensurate results for your prayer jesus you begin to see results of prayer amen you begin to see results of prayer amen the influence and impact of prayer in your life in your family in your environment everywhere about you and in our nation I need the grace for prayer. May you love prayer. May you love praying. May you love cultivating God's presence. May you become a delight. May you become your daily bread. May you become your food.
Rabazaka Pakata, Zato Sukupuku to Beket, Jesus said, Rato Sukupuka, he was Rabazaka Pakata Beket, but he stayed by you well, and another hunger well up in him. They are about to say, Let's go and eat, let's bring him food for you. Have you eaten? Jesus said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish it. The prayer become your meat. What does that mean? What gives me satisfaction? I find my pleasure, I find joy, I find fulfillment. I find satisfaction in doing the will of God that said it as an Indian. May your meat be the prayer. The prayer become what gives you pleasure, what gives you joy, what gives you satisfaction, what gives you a sense of fulfillment. You will pray in sitting a lot of sinning. You will pray in the morning. You will pray in the afternoon. You will pray in the evening. You will pray in the night. You will begin to pray without ceasing. No wonder the Bible says for men ought always to pray and not to faint. Today, from today, you will never faint again in prayer. You will pray without ceasing. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Grace to pray. Effective prayer. Effective prayer must be born of the right motive. Amen. You ask and receive not. Amen. For you pray to consume it in your own loss. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I commend these ones to you. Your word have comfort. Amen. There's a result it's meant to produce. Amen. And that result is love for prayer. Amen. May this world find fulfillment, find joy, Amen. find satisfaction, Amen. find answer, Amen. find transformation. Amen. May they change. May prayer change them. May prayer work for them. May prayer work in, on them. May prayer Amen. work through them. Amen. To bring blessing to their world. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Receive the grace, spirit of grace and supplication. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Prayer will no more be a struggle. Prayer will no more be a burden. It will be a delight. Amen. It will be your meat. Amen. It will be what gives you pleasure. It will be what gives you satisfaction. Find satisfaction in prayer. May God's heartbeat become your heartbeat. May kingdom concern become your concern. Amen. May the burden of Christ, the heartbeat of God, be transferred to you. Amen. So that when you pray, you pray with burden. Strong burden. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And from today, as we walk out from here, may prayers work for you. Amen. May prayers work on you. Amen. May prayers work through you. Amen. May your generation testify that prayer walk through you to bless them. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen.